110% listening, I use that to listen more about me, um, who I am as, as, an, as an individual. And because I recognize that um, it starts with me first. And if there is any change to happen, it's up to me because I only have control of myself. So I've been able to pay more attention to myself. Self has now been, you know, uh, first on my agenda, especially when it comes to um, health, wellness, because I've, I wasn't taking much time previous, prior to exercising, but I've now seen the benefit and I've seen the benefit both physically and mentally. I realized I'm operating as a manager, maybe totally to the detriment of my operating as a leader. Um, and I think the entire process, including the coaching, has really said to me, like, you know, you need to step up and shine as a leader. And I think that has been the most profound. I think I'm beginning to own the fact that I am. It wasn't something that had settled and resonated personally with me. I would just say, I'm just in a leadership position. I'm just in a managerial position but it didn't settle and I wasn't owning it. And I think now I'm far more confident. That the most significant change is possibility thinking and uh, optimism. I think those are linked because in government, there are so many challenges that one faces when one tries to make a difference, to make a change. And I believe that the possibility thinking has really shone through. We were introduced uh, a video celebrating what's right in the world. And for me, one of the lessons which stood out was we can't stop the wave, but we can learn how to ride it. And for me, my behavior has been riding that wave, the wave of uncertainty, change, apprehension, and the dynamics within our public sector environment. I have become a more resilient person and leader because of it. My most significant behavior change has to do with deliberation. I really think uh, much more strategically about issues before I act. Uh, and the thinking is, is on many levels. So I will go through looking at it from different perspectives, through different lenses. I think they will find that I'm a little more frank in terms of engaging them. You know, as I said, I'm more comfortable taking the uncomfortable or the unpopular stand. So I don't hedge. I'm more expressive. And I think people are more appreciative of that. You know, I was like a robot, you know, and I try to get my staff to be robots too because, you know, my unit has to be the best unit within the government service. We have to be producing the best work at all times. But now I'm learning to relax, you know, not be so competitive. And because I'm doing that, you know, our results are actually better. I would say having those difficult conversations, that has been really the most significant change. Before, I would procrastinate and kind of put, um, put off the time when I will have those conversations. But the CLP journey um, has really given me the tools, um, the techniques to have the confidence to actually have those crucial conversations um, earlier rather than, than later. You need to get to understand your people and make sure that they understand you and you're not just giving out instructions, giving orders, this is what's going to happen. You have to actually interact with them in a more personal way. Mm -hmm. It's a different way of thinking. This is not about the law, it's about you know, being a leader, leading by example, showing care, initiative inquiry, and thinking possibilities. Yes, that was a big step for me as well. Mm -hmm. I was looking for the little rainbow now, as opposed to saying, okay, you did X and Y and Z, so we do, but now the possibilities, how can we improve, how can we do all of the, the positive and things, as opposed to just always having that negative there. So it's a big change in how you think and approach people. For me, I think the LDP has ignited a fire inside of me, so that I know that I do have the power to make a difference. And um, with my coach, you know, we talk about how it is that you go about changing the culture and it's one person at a time.
one conversation at a time. I've become more assertive, more passionate about what I do and the work that I do. I have, um, I think I have been able to communicate that passion to other people within the organization. That is something I've seen recently. So because of that, I have gotten um, other people on board. For example, my uh, stretch project, by communicating my passion for it, explaining why it is important, what it could mean to not only the organization, but to the entire government of Suriname. I'm the type of person that like to multitask do several things at the same time. So when somebody come and visit me and talk to me about issues and such, like I'll be slightly distracted. <laughs> but, but now I actually spend the time to focus on the individual and try to assess what their immediate needs are and try to um, deal with them at that point in time. I've definitely started working on, on my self-expression. And along the way we would have um, worked on a number of different tools that would have helped me with that. Um, one of it definitely was the area of feedback and how to give feedback. Um, so with that I was able to figure out how is the best way to deal with situations when something happened um, instead of holding it in, um, finding that um, the best way to provide the feedback that is necessary to address the situation um, almost immediately but not coming across too harsh or um, too um, rough on the situation. I have been more focused in the sense that I recognize I need to be more generous so I'm more generous with staff. I'm listening to them more. I am not just listening because I'm supposed to listen but I'm genuinely listening, I'm being more authentic. And in a sense, the staff is feeling the difference. They are now recognizing that I'm genuinely interested in what they have to see. I'm not just interested, but seeking to implement and involve them in the decision making rather. I started to uh, build personal relationship with my staff. So whenever um, there was a project implemented, I acknowledged that some of them they needed more time. I had to explain more. I had to acknowledge their personalities. So that also made one of my staff members who was very uh, close, she, she didn't open up to me and uh, she was always hesitant. Um, she opened up and we had uh, evaluations, we had reflection meetings. So uh, she mentioned to me that uh, she didn't know how to satisfy me and uh, she thought that I would get angry. So I've built we're at the moment now where we're very close to each other and I myself I'm sharing. I'm also sharing uh, what I've learned and they're also part of my CLP journey because whenever I go back I will tell them these are improvements and they're also acknowledging my improvements. So one of my staff members she said I'm so happy you're in the program because you were like this, you need to do this, you need to do that. And you wouldn't, yes, task oriented and I wouldn't listen, uh, listen to them. But now everything's changed and that had also, has also led to um, uh, results, great results in the project that we're implementing at the moment on the Sustainable Development Goals. Is that I have now become a person who is able to express themselves better. I have been able to control my emotions more. Whereas before, if somebody would have spoken to me, I would be a little aggressive. Now I have become more assertive and able to express myself in a more appreciative language. My department is now dealing with their control of Zika. But strangely enough, I am not at work but I have persons now doing the kind of stuff that I would have liked them to do. And so to me, by actually having the discussion with them before, coaching them, guiding them, whenever I am not there, they are able to do the work that I supposed to be doing. I have 
been able to use specifically the 110% listening, which has allowed me to listen to my colleagues and I've also, that has allowed me also to use their strengths, tap into their strengths. And um, I now know that I don't have to always be in the leadership seat. That For CLP, I'd, I'd become a very angry and anxious person at work. So I requested a lot of my, of my reportees. I expected to, them to be like me, to react like me, to be as fast as I am, to be just as engaged as I am. And when I met with any type of resistance, I, I became very angry and it, I responded silently angry. Um, um, so now I'm able to see the differences and to appreciate the differences in my report is to accept everyone for their unique talent, um, to see each person as being important, uh, and not to expect everyone to be like me. Looking um, more broadly at the stakeholders in, in, involved in, in my area of work, which is disaster risk reduction, looking at them a bit more the pro in terms of even programming, instead of looking at it from my angle, looking at what they may want to get out of it and how it is benefiting the entire system and what each can actually contribute, looking at who has the, maybe the more influence in the entire system or in each program area that we want to we want to actually initiate or get off or implement. So those are two of the key things that came away. And one I would like to highlight here is possibility thinking. We I recognize now that I have a whole list of tools that I can bring to bear in a particular situation. Given all the complexities and the challenges that are involved in leadership, I am very excited now to take on issues knowing that I have a in my toolkit a whole list of tools that I know I'm very confident. What is exceptional about the program, for me at least, is that almost every situation you can encounter, there is a tool. Before that, uh, situations would arise where I would react maybe on the spur of the moment, um, and that could have a range of results, or, or it results in failure as well. Now I can dip into my toolbox. Uh, there is a tool for almost every situation that I may encounter, and that is as a result of the CLP.